Welcome to this episode of History Hunters. We're outside of Genoa, Nevada, and we're going to take a look at one of Nevada's oldest established towns dating back to 1851. This was one of the direct routes from Virginia City over to the Placerville and Sacramento area. And we're gonna go check out different parts of this town as well as the cemetery. When I think about Genoa, Nevada, I think about the time that presidential candidate Horace Greeley had to make his way from this little village over here all the way to Placerville for a speech. He was running for president, he was late. Harry Monk, the famous stage driver said, don't worry, I'll get you there in time. And he did, he just about broke the guy's neck getting him there. That story was later retold by Mark Twain in Roughing It in chapter 20, which made Hank Monk, a very famous stagecoach driver. In fact, we did a little show about his grave at the Carson City Cemetery. You might want to check that one out. So imagine, if you will, this being a dirt road at the base of this mountain in 1859, and a stage flying right by here with Hank at the reins and Horace bracing himself inside. This marks the spot of the old Kingsbury grade originally named the Georgetown Trail. It cost about $70,000 to construct a wagon road to meet the demand for a more direct route from the Washoe Mines to California and a shorter distance between Virginia City and Sacramento by about 10 miles. The significance of this courthouse is that it was one of the stops for the Pony Express, which operated in 1860 to 1861, till the telegraph actually went into place. This building went up in 1865 when this town was the county seat of Douglas County. These plaques note that the express stop was located here or nearby. When the courthouse was moved, this became a school until 1956. The bricks for this building actually came from the local ranch of a Rufus Adams, whose grave is nearby. Sarah's looking at a statue there of Lillian Virgin Fennigan, who started the famous candy dance back when they needed to raise money to have electric lights installed here, street lights. It was in 1919 that she started that tradition. Homemade candy is an incentive for a good turnout. There's a statue of her right there. She was an early graduate of Nevada State University. She was a teacher and respected community leader. This is Genoa's famous Pink House. It was built in 1855, and in it lived the town founder of John Reese. It was later occupied by Judge Daniel Webster Virgin and his wife Mary, and his daughter Lillian Virgin Finnegan, the one who originated the candy dance from this house. Ever since, this community has been holding the candy dance. In this empty lot opposite the Pink House is the site where the Douglas Seminary once sat as far back as 1881. There's a picture of the seminary here on the sign. This is a recreation of the Mormon station, which was built in 1851 by the Mormon immigrants. This is how it might have looked. Right across the street are more modern commercial buildings. In 1851, Colonel John Reese with a little band of 18 men crossed the great deserts and built the first trading post in Nevada. This, the Mormon station. Later came more members of the Mormon faith who settled this as Genoa, the first town in Nevada. This piece of rail here is a marker that designates this is the historic Carson Trail. It reads, at the foot of the mountains, the Mormons have established a trading post, passing on from this place as fast as we could to save what little money we had. We continued up Carson Valley from the diary of Edward Patterson in 1850. Right there is a California trail emblem. There's an old wagon. So it was the territorial governor of Utah that wanted an establishment of Mormons over here to kind of keep law and order and have some kind of system of government. Over here is a statue dedicated to the memory of Snowshoe Thompson, the legendary Norwegian skier that settled here. Sarah's gonna check it out. Uh, no, she's not. I said you were gonna check out the statue, but 
Uh, <laughs> I already checked it out earlier and now I'm just sitting in the sun because it's gold. From 1856 until his death in 1876, Snowshoe delivered mail over the Sierras from Genoa to Placerville. He also saved a lot of snowbound people. So this is the inside of the Mormon station. This is actually a picture of the way it looked. I believe it burned in 1910. As you see a false front on it. That false front is not built on the replica that we're in right now, but it's on the same spot as this building. There's some weapons there on the mantle. This was initially a uh, trading post. It wasn't a fort. There's a saber up there that belonged to John Reese, founder of the Mormon Station. Here's another picture of the way this building looked way back. Eliza Midoff Mott arrived in Carson Valley in 1851 with her husband Israel. I settled just south of the Mormon Station in an area that became known as Mottsville. She's considered the first white woman to settle in this area. Here's Orson Hyde. He was an apostle of the Mormon Church. He led the official colonization effort to Carson Valley in 1855. He's best known in this area for his curse on Washu Valley, uttered at the time of the Mormon groups returned to Salt Lake City. This is a 1851 Lemure Gilbert piano. And it's said right there that the Pony Express riders relaxed to the sounds of this piano during their stops here in Genoa. Here's the story of Hank Monk, who drove Mr. Horse Greeley on that wild ride from Genoa all the way to Placerville, California, so that he could speak on time. And there are his bearskin gloves. Of course, we visited his grave in Carson City, Nevada. There's Hank up there. Snowshoe Thompson's skis or replicas of his skis. And there he is right there. Here's the route that he followed. This was not a fort per se, but a stockade for oxen and horses. Our understanding is that Mr. Reese, who established this station would trade two tired and worn out oxen for one fresh one. He would then restore them and build up stock for additional trade. The oxen were kept here, although it surely didn't look like the spark setting. Hundreds of wagons made it across the unforgiving dry desert. So the Genoa looked like an oasis to the travelers and their oxen. Lots of cattle never made it this far because they died of thirst or starvation or just plain exhaustion. I think every corner in this town is claiming that it's the place where the Pony Express stopped near the spots to the Genoa or Mormon station of the Pony Express from 1860 to 1861. They actually traveled from St. Joseph, Missouri to Sacramento by relaying horses. It didn't last very long and it never made a profit. And there's the Douglas County Masonic Lodge built in 1868. And over here, you can see they've got some old signs up. They're painted for new, obviously. A little bit of nostalgia here. Charted on September 17, 1868 by the newly created Grand Lodge of Nevada. Their first worshipful master was Robert Bolin. In 1873, they purchased this building in a partially finished condition. It was completed in November of 1873. Got a bunch of antiques here. A little trunk here that's falling apart. Well, this is an 1877 general store by John Davis. I'm hoping that is fake, but he kind of looks real. I think he is real. Did you see that? It's, it's real. No, are you sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's real. But that breastbone has been so gone to the ribs. Oh, sure looks real.
Here's this old 1930 Nevada license plate. Look at this old telegraph sign up there. That's very cool. As you can tell, that building has had a little bit of modification over the years with additional mortar placed in it. it is that a real skele skeleton up there? Yeah. It is. Yeah. What was it from? Oh, I thought it was the city. In fact, it's from two of them. Kind of barn. They were in an old barn? Yeah. Wow. I don't know those skeletons in an old barn in Carson City. How long has this been here? What? Antique store. Oh, uh, I've had it for 50 years. 50 years? Yeah. Wow. A lot of old stuff in here. Do you sell much of it? Oh, uh, it's pretty quiet around, you know. Uh, yeah. Most of the time. Once in a while. You know, people know me over the years. How much of this stuff is actually from Genoa? Oh, uh, not that much. Not that much? It used to be. I bet my dad played with something like that, that little army thing. Mm, cool. And they probably didn't pay that much for it. $1,100? Like oh, no, that thing is oh. 165 So yesterday afternoon, we came over to see Nevada's oldest watering hole, but it was too loud and too busy and too crowded. So we came this morning to see it with nobody around. It was established in 1853. It's been said that Clark Gable and Carol Lombard came here, Red Skelton, Raquel Welch, John Wayne, and Ron Howard all drank here. John Wayne, in fact, rented this bar when they were filming The Shootist in nearby Carson City. It was from here that the Jackass Express Mail Service started in 1851. It's a very cool old building. With those flags and that patriotic bunting, this is every bit American as you can get. Mark Twain, it has been said, visited here back in his days with the Territorial Enterprise newspaper. Thanks for watching this installment of our two-part series on Genoa. On the next episode of History Hunters, we'll take you to the Genoa Cemetery and find the graves of such notable personalities as Snowshoe Thompson, David Wally of David Wally's Hot Springs Resort, and the man who inspired the Ferris wheel, William Cradlebaugh.